All right, let's kick this off. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Headed Home Podcast. I'm excited about the episode today. We've got Nick Aarons hanging out with us today. Nick, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys for having me. It's great uh, actually reconnecting with you guys. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you just moved to Colorado. He's new to the Mile High City. Okay. He took his talents to the 303. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you used to, and you surfed, right? Like you grew up surfing. Oh yeah, I grew up little I call it a small beach town okay. uh, because it felt isolated where we were in San Clemente, okay. in California. Because to the south of us there's the largest military base in the country, Camp Pendleton. Okay. Which also is to the east of the city. To the west is the ocean. Right. There's only one city adjacent north. Hmm. So it had a small town feel to it. Okay. Everybody, including myself, pretty much grew up at the beach. Yeah. Surfing, lifeguarding, swimming, uh, played water polo my whole life, all that growing up. I've heard the beaches in San Clemente are amazing, like second to none when it comes to uh, like the surf life. Like, is it, are they, are they, is it known for just like a really awesome surfing experience there? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a very heavy surf culture embedded there. Uh, at one point, there were more surfboards being manufactured there than anywhere else in the world. Really? <clears throat> yeah. That, and I think there's four professional surfers on the on the world championship tour right now of 32 are from San Clemente. Hmm. And then three wow. of the other guys have houses in San Clemente. Wow. Okay. I just need to like yeah. understand. How far away is it from like Anaheim? What's like the... Drive time depends on traffic. Yes, typical California answer could be thirty minutes, could be an hour. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, we're going to Anaheim soon. Nice. So I was trying to, I was trying to frame where where that was in relation. Nice. Going to Disneyland. Can't wait. Yes, you can. I I, I <laughs> love wow. Disneyland. I don't like the lines, <laughs> and there's a lot of lines there. Yep, mm -hmm. it gets packed. Mm -hmm. Well, Nick, tell us. Um, so you so you grew up in in San Clemente, mm -hmm. uh, surfer, water polo. Which, man, that's got to be such a hard sport. I, that's kind of all I knew. A lot of people say that, so I'm like, I I don't know. I don't, I don't have a whole lot to compare it to. I tried baseball, couldn't hit the ball. Tried basketball, couldn't even make a layup. <laughs> So I never really got anywhere in any any other sports outside of surfing, swimming, and water polo. So I don't, mm. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, exhausting. I'll tell you that much. It seems exhausting. Like I look <laughs> at it as uh, similar to basketball, I guess, basketball or hockey. But like you're treading water the entire time, and then there's that risk of you getting pushed under and held under. Like, does that happen a lot? Oh yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. You kind of wait till the ref's not looking, shove a guy underwater. Yeah. kick off swim away now you have an advantage and yeah just pretty much yeah you swim you sprint in the pool to one end of it yeah you basically wrestle a guy try to score a goal if you can't then you fight to see who's gonna shove and kick off the other person first to get back to the other end and repeat Jeez. all while you're treading water all in you know 10 feet of water yeah. That's yeah. crazy. I'd like to try it sometime. I mean, I, I've watched it on the Olympics and it just, I just remember watching it and being like, wow, that would be a hard sport. And yes, you see, it seems like you could get a, get away with a lot underwater without the refs noticing. Yeah. You've got, um, a lot of people in the pool and one, sometimes two referees. Yeah. Jeez. And like a lot of stuff could go down in the water where like the ref isn't seeing, I'm assuming. Right. Like, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's just part of the game. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you played pretty competitively, right? I did, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I grew up in a very competitive environment for that and ended up having an opportunity to fortunately go to USC because of that. Uh, the coach helped me get on the team there. Mm -hmm. And so really cool experience uh, being around that type of environment. Um, you know, high caliber, very driven people. Um, it was one of the best programs before, during, and after I was mm. there. Mm. Really? Yeah. They actually, uh, they had a three-peat the year before I was there. They didn't win the national championship when I was there, and then they won again. But that wasn't because of me. That was... <laughs> wasn't your that fault. Was, that was other circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it was probably cool, and it probably taught you a lot to be around a group of people that had that expectation 
if they won three straight, even though they didn't when you were there, they probably had that that expectation and that and like the systems built for you for you guys to be successful. Yeah, the system was there. Yeah. Um, the swim program as well. They would they would be in the pool right after or right before us all the time, and it was a very unique experience. Um, being around people, you know, you show up the first week and you see these people with the Olympic rings tattooed <laughs> on the inside of their Dang. arm or their shoulder or their back. Wow. And, you know, I didn't have any clue. So first thing I did is I went up to him and I go, hey, what's what's that for? He goes, oh, everybody who you see here has gone to the Olympics. Wow. Has either competed in it or had to go because they were that next person in case something happened to that starting lineup person. Hmm. And so, yeah, the systems were there and it takes a lot of dedication and drive just to even get to that point. And then for those people to make it there, that's a whole nother, you know, a whole nother level of drive and dedication that those people have. I feel yeah. like you, I mean, I, I'm assuming, but you likely learned a lot from that experience that you transferred into real estate. Uh, I would say yes, absolutely. Um, biggest so i think there's two things that come to mind around that one is it's important for me to have a blueprint or a direction from a coach mm. and just be very humble mm. hmm. just be very humble of hey here's my mindset here's where i'm at emotionally here's where my finances are at here's where everything is tell me what to do with this platform and this system here to become successful. Mm -hmm. And I have to change my habits, my thoughts, my emotional patterns, all of it to be able to get to where I want to go. And whether, whether that was in the pool or professional life as well. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind, you noted, and we've already been touching on it, is that drive somebody has to have. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I just, for whatever reason, had that growing up and still have it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And did your parents instill that in you, you think? I think so. I think a lot of it was my dad. He was a small business owner. He was a chiropractor for uh, about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so and he was just driven. Yeah, He was very, very driven at work and, you know, make a successful family from a financial standpoint and then doing his best to try to be there when he wasn't working. Yeah. But yeah, in retrospect, he worked a lot of hours. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'd say, hey, kids, we're going to go to the beach. I'd go, okay, awesome. Let's go. Let's throw our boogie boards in, our surfboards in, our towels in the car. And then we'd show up at his office. <laughs> I'd go, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I got to go work for an hour. He'd go work for an hour. We'd hang out in the car and then we'd go to the beach. Wow. Just so he could get a little more in because he knew he needed to do that mm -hmm. to support the family and, and get his business where he needed to go. So I think there's a lot of subconscious things there of me just having that drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And seeing it. And, mm -hmm. and, and we mm -hmm. talk a lot about this on this podcast and just with each other about parenting, your kids aren't going to do what you tell them to do. They're no. going to do what you do. And so by modeling a certain way, a certain, and, and in your case, those disciplines that it took for him to be successful at work but also be, you know, a loving father to you and, and take parenting serious as well. I mean, that's sub, that, like you said, subconsciously, you, you saw that and then kind of molded yourself after that as well. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah I was very fortunate um, to grow up in that environment and, and have that experience with them. I want to touch on the coachability piece, but mm -hmm. before we, before we talk about that, how, like, how did you get into real estate? So you're at USC, you're playing water polo, then what? Um, found out I like water polo. I don't love it <laughs> <clears throat> enough to spend 35 to 45 hours a week between the weight rooms, travel time, the practices, all that stuff. Um, at the end of college, I was working at two different bars going, okay, this is great because I get to surf. Mm -hmm. Working at the bars is fun, even though it's exhausting, but I don't want to be doing this when I'm 75. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just ended up for whatever reason saying, Hey, you know, flipping homes sounds like a really fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about it. <laughs> I had never been in sales, never been on commission whatsoever. Um, I ended up getting a position with a group of guys who were flipping about four, five, six, seven homes a month. 
Dang. Oh, wow. Um, and they were they had me initially driving properties that were going to trust sale. Okay. Okay. The whole sketchy thing in its yeah. own. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they started putting more on my plate, doing the subcontracting of the work, estimating values of what they needed to acquire the property at, what it was going to resell at. And then after everything was done, I would help with the open house and reselling the properties. Um, it was exhausting and it does not stop. Mm -hmm. And so ended up slowly trying to transition into more of a residential real estate position, which I found a lot more fun, Mm -hmm. still a grind, still hard to do. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, but fewer phone calls of from the painter saying, Hey, the flooring guy's not done. So I can't get this Mm -hmm. done. And then the electrician saying the painter's not done. So it's his fault. I'm not done. And then so on down the line. Right. And then you've got the deadlines to have, you need them to get (laughs) done so that y'all can keep moving forward with your flip too. Yeah. That'd be stress. That'd be stressful. Uh, It's stressful. And you have to continuously find the next deal. Yeah. Because it's not like what I do now, which is if I provide great service to somebody, they'll use me again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're going to refer me their friends and family. Yeah. So there's an inherent building of a business in that sense where you don't have to always be on the grind finding that next deal. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just more fun to connect to people. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And it personalizes it. There's like a story behind it. It's not just the navigating the nuances of those things. Well, one well, is the relationships too. Right. You know, because I'm sure on the, in that flip world, it's more, it's not as transactional. It's transactional. That's the yeah. word. Thanks babe. You know me so well. Transactional <laughs> versus relational. What did, I, what did I tell you, Nick? I just yeah. <laughs> known each other for a long time. She, we sometimes just sit in silence and we have conversations with each other. It's sort of yeah. embarrassing, yeah. but so like, 10 minutes of little like just... eyebrow exchanges and then you burst into <laughs> laughter because you already know the punchline of the joke. It is exactly. weird. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's We're kind like of embarrassing sometimes. Do you want to just guess what we're going to say next and say the sentence together? I'm Hold on. We're not the same. I'm like the funnier version of Andrew. Right, and like. I'm smarter and better looking. So anyway, on to the next. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> My ass. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so you, you, you started going to the residential side. Um, and tell us about that. Like uh, when, when you started out on that side, did you join a team or did you go in just solo by yourself? Um, well, it was with the same guy. So there's two pieces to it. When I first got in, I was working three jobs while trying to get into real estate. Jeez. Coaching youth just sports, so coaching like high school sports <laughs> and cleaning windows. Jeez. <sighs> yeah. And then trying to do all of that at the same time. Mm. Yeah, I was really tired mm. mm-hmm. for a lot of years, but it, paid off um, and it's not like coaching because i feel i've coached high school you coach youth sports yeah it that like i the amount of like bandwidth that that takes emotionally to like be a good coach and be pre- like that's a legit oh it's a lot like job mm-hmm. <laughs> well yeah if you're coaching a group of 30 kids uh-huh. who are all in middle school or high school uh-huh you have to be present for all 30 simultaneously. Yes. Some will sort of manage themselves, but there's a lot of managing that goes on. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun though. Yeah. It's really rewarding mm-hmm. to see them start to socialize, their confidence increase, their social skills increase, all that through that whole process. Yeah. I, I loved it for that. Yeah, Agreed. That, yeah. That's awesome. So you were, yeah. So doing um, a lot when you first started. Um, start, and then you, st- you tell us then, then, yeah. So you started on with a team, right? <laughs> yeah. Started on with the team with those guys who were flipping houses. Okay. Was meeting people at the open houses, trying to help them buy or sell a home. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, saved up two months in reserves and said, all right, I'm doing this. I probably should have saved up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of times where it was really getting close there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew with, with my drive, the um, that team I was on initially, great guy. He runs a phenomenal business. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about him. Got to know his family. Just, just a great guy. But I knew I just needed more hands-on coaching than he was able to provide. Mm-hmm. So I started looking around for somebody who had, I guess for lack of a better word, a blueprint of, hey, do here's A to Z of what you need to do. You can have a little variation left or right on these 
you know, 15 points of your 24. Mm-hmm. Um, but this will get you to where you want to go. And that's what I was looking for. And so fortunately I found a team that had that with a lot of built-in coaching and mentorship. And that's where my business really started to take off. How long did it take until you weren't feeling like, oh gosh, I should have saved up more in reserve? You know, how, how, when did you feel like you were like, okay, I can make a career out of this? Um, that's a good question. Can I? <laughs> I, I'm asking myself that every day. I mean, we're in sales, you know, we're on the lending side. I, it's, you're right, man. Like it's crazy, uh, especially after these past couple of years. It's so I think there was a shift in confidence that happened after I looked, how do I even phrase this the right way? Um, so with the last team, uh, team lead names, Jimmy, great guy. And he would cut straight to the point and make you feel really tiny emotionally. And I'd go, holy crap, I'm doing this all wrong. Mm. My thinking's wrong. My values are wrong. My belief system is wrong. And he's totally right, and I need to adjust so much, Mm. my personal development-wise, skill set sales-wise, all of it and more. Um, And so there was just a lot of humility that happened while I was growing, and to come back to it, took a while for me to generate confidence to then look back and go, I've sold a crap load of homes. Hmm. And then talking to other agents, cause we were just heads down in our office, just going and grinding and learning and growing and repeating over and over and over. Uh, and we pretty much had blinders on for everybody mm-hmm. who's on our team. They, they all know that as well. Mm-hmm. And it took a few years to then look back and go, these agents, who I looked up to, I have now far surpassed and they're coming to me for advice. Mm-hmm. And it was a, that hit me right there. Knowing, okay, I'm in this middle ground of definitely not where I want to go. Definitely still getting a lot of really great coaching and mentorship and skill set building that's happening. But I've already gone past, yeah, this whole group that I've looked up to. Did, were they that, that were they getting were they getting yeah. the same coaching and mentorship? Would you say um, the other group or the people on my team? The the people on your team, same mentorship and coaching. Yeah, yeah. I just i I think what's you know fascinating, and and the older I get, I just think about this a lot. Like there is, you know, something to be said about the coachability of the person that's being coached. Right. And I mean, you know, this from coaching Mm -hmm. like little humans, right? Like you can, you can give the same coaching to multiple kids um, or multiple adults. And it's fascinating to me that some people will take it and run with it and do and implement the things that like they're saying to do. And some people don't. And I just, I think that's like a really, and we always it's talk about it. Like, why does that happen? We don't know. But um, he mentioned something at the very beginning of the of this conversation, and you said humility. You said being mm. humble. Yeah. I think coachability and humility are one and the same in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. You have to be humble. You have to be open to, hey, I don't know what I'm doing yeah. for the most part, especially in this industry where every situation is different and you're never actually going to know everything. <laughs> You just have to, and and that's why I think personal development is so important. So tell us about that journey of feeling like you needed to, you needed that personality shift. Maybe you had some like imposter syndrome. I know I did when I got in the industry, I was in the waiting in, in the serving industry for a long time in restaurant business. And it was like, I'm this server who is doing loans for four or five years, you know? And it wasn't until I, I like made that mindset shift of now I'm a loan officer, but like, what sort of things did you have yeah. to do to get there? Oh, gosh, a lot. Do you have a tissue box <laughs> that I can just start grabbing as we go here? Just use your shirt. You're good. Okay. okay. It's a lot, <laughs> man. It is. It's a lot. Um, it's It felt like a beatdown, and it still does. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but to do that, it was, yeah, a lot of that happened. And at one point, um, our mentor, our team lead, came up to me and said, Nick, I got to be honest. I don't know how to coach you in the certain aspect of, of communicating with people and connecting with people. You're an awkward dude. I was like, <laughs> Touche. okay, here we go. It's going to be an interesting conversation. He goes, I'm going to give you two options and you've only got two options. 
You could go to Toastmasters or you can take an acting class. I was like, uh, I, uh, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. You're what's, like, what's I'm an op- awkward dude, remember? Like, Th- both of those sound terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what's option three? Yeah. It's like, um, uh, can I go drive pizzas door to door? Like, how, how does this work here? Um, so <clears throat> I thought about it and I went, okay. And the acting route, I'm like, I don't know anything about that. The presenting route from a Toastmasters type setup, I went, let's go there. Did that for a while. That was helpful, and I realized, I guess, more of those insecurities I had with myself and more of that awkwardness as mm-hmm. well at the same time. And that helped me get to a point to where I went, I need individual acting lessons to really be able to dig deep into whatever's happening and the mechanics of communicating with people mm-hmm. and connecting. Hmm. Acting, acting lessons. lessons. Tell us about it. I want to know about this. I want to do it. This is fascinating. Well, so side note, Andrew is, Andrew, you have tendencies to be sort of like uncomfortable. I speak in front of a lot of people, like a lot. So like, I'm very comfortable talking. You struggle with that. You're kind of. I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you why. It's because I give way too much of a shit about what other people think. Yeah. And I've had to work a lot on that over the years. But when I was younger, it was like. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to fit in with this crowd or I wanted to fit in with that crowd and through that. And I was good at that. I was Mm -hmm. popular and I was good at fitting in with those crowds. But then when I got into adulthood, trying to figure out like, well, who am I though? Like without all of them, I struggled. And so sometimes I would struggle like in front of people because I don't, if there's like 50 people (laughs) here, I don't know which one of you I need to blend in to be like Mm -hmm. for you to like me, Mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, um, yeah, I understand how that is. But yeah, tell us about acting lessons and what you learned from it. Oh gosh, I don't I don't know where to start here. <laughs> um, there's a lot. It's a lot of it. So so my acting coach, Brett Duggan, D U G G A N, just brilliant guy and and has really transformed how I communicate. And I guess big picture, it's kind of two things. It's how to connect with people better. Mm. And two is how to be more of you and be more authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether it is abrasive or people pleasing or whatever that is, whatever, th- well, people pleasing would be the opposite. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that came to mind. Former people pleaser here. <laughs> yeah. Still mm-hmm. working on it because it still comes yeah. and goes. Um, <clears throat> but it's how to be genuinely you without that fear. Because I get that all the time. You noted earlier. The imposter syndrome mm-hmm. still comes and goes mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. I had a Zoom call today with with our team. It was there. Yeah. Yeah. Just like two hours ago. Going, what am I doing? Am I going to make it in this business? I think that's why mm-hmm. personal mm-hmm. development. I mean, I know that you, you're really big into that and we are too, but it that's so vital to continue to feed your mind that stuff, right? Because as you're learning new skills and, and tools like through acting, that stuff is going to keep popping up for you. And you you can know all of these personal development things, but you have to continually keep like feeding yourself that because that stuff does pop up. Well, yeah, and when we're in uncomfortable situations, at least I know for me, I default back to where I was. Yep. Oh, and I'm yeah. no longer myself. I get anxious. I get people-pleasing tendencies. Yeah. W- especially when it's stressful, like mm-hmm. a negotiation or I'm talking to a seller or whatever situation in life comes up with my friends or family, that creates tension. Mm-hmm. And it it's hard to stay grounded as to who I am keep my boundaries and keep moving forward to the life I want to live and not be influenced by all that stuff. That is hard. It's hard. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm way far from perfect (laughs) at it. It, There is like brain science around like why your body is triggered in those moments. And like you, you go back to those habits that you're used to. Did you, as you started out, you know, doing acting lessons, did you have to really work on, like figuring out who you were as you were doing that? Because I would assume that that would, I mean, as you said, like a big piece of moving forward with that work. That's a good question. I, there's revelations that have happened through it. Um, and a lot of it is getting, so I am very analytical mm-hmm. and I get way into my own head. Yeah. I will sit 
So I used to, when somebody would answer, ask me a question, process the answer, condense the answer, make sure it makes sense, then answer. Mm-hmm. And I would just stare at people for like five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and they'd be sitting there going, what the hell's like, going what's, on right what's up with Nick? <laughs> yeah. Who is this dude? And yeah. he's like looking away and like shine away and stuff like that. And like, but there, but, but I knew the prob- answer. You, I just didn't know how to communicate it and connect. And so what it's done um, is helped me get out of that. And this is the biggest thing my acting coach and I are working on right now is it's okay to do two things. Pause, <laughs> wait before responding or even mid-sentence. And second biggest thing, trusting myself that I know the answer. Mm. So if I'm talking to somebody and they say, hey, what do we do with our finances and our situation in this house over here? I can just pause for a split second, start talking. The answer will come Mm. because I have the skill set and the knowledge base from what I've done in my experience. And I need to trust that in myself more. That's a really interesting idea that came from the acting classes because when when i first when you told me that you took acting classes and that it's helped you in your business and your communication skills i thought like oh you took acting to like morph into something else but but really it's you're taking acting classes to become more authentically you so that you can yeah be better at your job i don't know it's almost like and a, communicate in the way that you want to communicate as who you are I mean, yeah. that's how but I... But at first, when I first thought it, I was like, oh, well, like, you're, yeah, you're acting so that you can act like somebody else better, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's really just to become more of myself and communicate better to the world. You think it's one of, like, the the best practices that you've done in, in your life? Like, do you think it's helped you more than other, you know, coaching sessions or different trainings that you've done? Oh, man. I've done so much. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely up there. It, yeah. It's in that top couple of things I've done for sure. Would yeah. you recommend acting classes to other real estate agents out there? I would. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, I interviewed, and if anybody's planning to do that, I interviewed a bunch of different acting coaches and I said, here's what I want. I get nervous. I get in my head. I, I get imposter syndrome. I get anxious. I get awkward. I look away from people. I overprocess and overanalyze <laughs> and it just becomes this uncomfortable hodgepodge for everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to get through because a lot of times I know the answers like it's, and I finally found an acting coach who says, I got it. I help a lot of, um, high level corporate people in management or CEOs help present, create speeches, design how to present. And a lot of those things go into play there. Um, anybody who follows Elon Musk, just go look at him from 15 years ago in his interviews. Most awkward dude yeah. you've <laughs> ever heard on video in your life. Go look at him now. Very polished, well-spoken, a little awkward, mm-hmm. but still himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Interesting. It's well, a, I'm but it's try a, that out. It's a totally different skill. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, like if you guys, if you think of like communicating and having to communicate with people in sales, it's something that's so vital, especially in like first impressions, right? Yeah. And, you know, being able to connect with humans like very quickly, that's really, really important. And so. Yeah. Um, and being able to trust yourself. Yeah. Because there isn't this industry, like there's, there's really not like a black and white answer. A lot of times you have to trust your decision-making skills based on your experience. And you have to do that on the fly a lot. And so, yeah, that, that's an interesting point to just learn how to trust yourself more because you know what you're doing, obviously, if you were that successful, you know, and, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've sold hundreds of homes and a lot of times people getting interviewed to So let me back up. A lot of times when somebody's interviewing realtors to sell their home, most of the agents are only selling two, three, four homes a year. Mm -hmm. And I was selling 30, 40, 50, 60 homes a year over and over. But I'd still get anxious, imposter syndrome, analysis paralysis in my own head. Mm -hmm. And it would come out in all the wrong ways. Mm -hmm. I'd get rigid and I'd go here. My voice would tense up. I go, okay, I just need to relax. 
I'm better than anybody else they're interviewing. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's just trusting yourself and then especially becoming a, um, you know, a reforming people pleaser and anxious person becoming more assertive in trusting myself in that way as well and pushing that aside because those cannot coexist. Mm-mm. Are yep. you a recovering perfectionist? Still am. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, and I laugh because mm-hmm. like I, I hear, I mean, I, I used to be like that a long time ago, but I think that, you know, when, when you feel like you have to do everything perfectly, it really limits your ability to like, trust yourself right and so i think like almost creating this culture of error with yourself that like hey i'm going to make mistakes and like not everything is going to be perfect and if i'm if i i'm going to learn from that right like there's going to be invaluable learning that like i'm going to get from you know a potential mistake that i make um but like allowing yourself the acceptance that like you are not a perfect person like you're just not no one is uh i think yeah, but that's like a tricky thing to change. Oh, yeah. And it takes a long time. <laughs> takes a long time. If you know the answer, let me know. Yeah, I don't. I just, okay. you know what? I'm I still think working on it. I, uh, when I do, I do trainings with um, like school leaders and I talk to them about like you have the, you have to fail. Like you mm-hmm. have to, you have to allow yourself to like, create this culture of error with yourself that like if it happens like you're gonna you're gonna learn from it and you're gonna get a little bit better every day I mean that's really and that's how you build confidence right like you were talking about that and and really continuing to do is how you build confidence and how you minimize some of those perfectionist tendencies I feel like I don't know oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah you're perfect though of course yeah not at all (laughs) Um, Not at all. Not at all. (laughs) I want to talk about your transition to Colorado because Mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, having success in California, crushing it out there, moved to Colorado recently in in the real estate business. Um, And I know you just joined a team. So tell us, like, why did you decide to join a team after being successful in California? Um, Same reasons. Same reasons I wanted to join my last team back in California. I want a blueprint. I want a model I can base things off of. Whether I pivot from that, which in all honesty, pretty much everybody will from the plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody plans six steps ahead and gets to all six. Mm-hmm. We get right. to step two or three and then we have a new goal. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be able to hit the ground running with that plan was very important to me. Um, what I have noticed is a lot of the skill sets pretty much the same. You're really, you're helping be people fulfill their goals in that next chapter in their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, no matter where it is, if they're up in Broomfield or Thornton or down here in Centennial, downtown Denver and one of the high rises, whatever it is, we're helping people fulfill their goals. Part of it's financial, part of it's emotional, part of it's lifestyle and putting all that together. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something, um, again, with the assertiveness and directness that I've worked on a lot is very transferable to any market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly where the boundaries are between cities, <laughs> but you'll, you'll learn. I don't even know. And we're from here. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not that important. Speak for yourself. Yeah. That's what I, maps are for. So I, you know, I know we'd mentioned this, but you're like us really big into personal development. I'm mm-hmm. assuming you're a morning routine sort of guy do you have a morning routine oh no okay tell me Why more would you assume that no, well I'm just I'm just <laughs> I, I've had probably 15 different morning routines okay that last anywhere from a week to a couple years <laughs> okay and then it falls apart and goes to shambles okay yeah. um, personally I'm a big believer that a morning routine helps me grow into who I want to become mm-hmm. uh, for the day for the month for the year and so on forward And I think, at least for me personally, I'll gain certain things from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, For example, the right mindset when I really need it and I'm just not in a good headspace for a month. It's really important for me to get up and exercise every single morning and go to bed real early. What's the earliest you've gone to bed? (laughs) That's a good question. Um, 
For a while, it was 8.30. Oh, that was making me feel okay. Yeah. That's we're our... we're super lame. We go to bed early. Yeah. His favorite well... <laughs> his favorite joke to make is we live across from a, a, the street from a church, and it's like a older group at this church. And so we'll be in bed at like eight o'clock, and the lights will come on at the church. And he's mm-hmm. like, "What are they doing up so late? <laughs> up in the middle of the night? <laughs> what are they doing up in the middle of the night?" I'm like, "God, babe, we're so lame." <laughs> uh, I mean, but if you get up early, you have to go to bed early if you want to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. And and I think that that's one of the keys to to a morning routine where you have the time to exercise like you said you got to get up before the day starts you know because like you probably start getting emails and calls as early as like 7 or 8 a.m you know yeah and so yeah to have that time where you're not going to be interrupted um is important and intentionally choosing things in your morning that like you really deeply know that you need like i really like that where it's like Mm -hmm. i know that i need this this month because my brain is not in a good space or like whatever. And being very thoughtful and intentional about that. I really, I really like that. Yeah. So, so my Jen and I, we are taking this year to really focus on our health, mental, emotional, spiritual, all of it. Love it. Uh, And so we keep trying to figure out, okay, what is it we need to do now? I know for me, when I've, I've tried to do the morning routine with nine different things and it worked amazing. Yeah. For about two days. Yeah. And then it fell apart. So we keep going. We, fortunately, she's amazing. Um, I just, it's just her, a phenomenal it's person. It's her name. It's, it's, I think it's, it's her all name. in the name. <laughs> it's the name. It's the name. Uh, but we hold each other accountable uh, to, and our biggest thing right now is just, just our physical health, mm-hmm. uh, our gut and getting to the gym. If we can do the, one of those two things and focus just on that, a lot of other things will start to fall into place. I like that. If you don't have your health, you don't have a whole lot. Yeah. Yep. It's and really and your physical health, I think, is very connected to your mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. That's that's good, though. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. We talk about morning routine a lot. And I'm the same way. Like, I'll get on one. And, and we might have talked about this when we talked up front. Uh, the Hal Elrod kind of mentality mm-hmm. of the miracle morning stuff where it's like yep. the, the increments, you know, of the 10 minutes reading, meditating, journaling, mm-hmm. all that. But it is hard, like that. It's almost like um, setting yourself up with a morning routine that might just be one or two things. Maybe it's just one thing, like, hey, I get up and I work out in the morning. Yeah. Like at least, at least that's something that's going to set you in the right direction on your day. And um, I'm, just simplify it. You know, one mm-hmm. or two things. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, <clears throat> I've I've done enough things, and you you guys kind of touched on it earlier, which is I've done enough things to get to know myself enough to where if I go, okay, I'm feeling upset all day for no reason and I can't figure out why. I know I just need to get outside, mm-hmm. leave my phone in the car and just go on a walk. Yeah. Yeah. Or I know at certain times I need certain things. Mm-hmm. I have a long ways to go in terms of understanding myself way better, but I've gotten to that point where I've kind of got a pretty good idea now mm-hmm. on, how to, on how to regulate those things on a, on a daily basis. Andrew does that for me when I get really cranky. He's like, "Go eat something." Will you just go? Yeah, you're usually so, when you're hungry. Yeah, so you're angry so your you're Jen hungry. is my Jen. Exactly. Okay, yeah. Just, go, just eat. go eat, please, for yeah. all of us or, involved. Yeah. Or take a nap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, she won't nap, but I can get you to get a snack. Oh, <laughs> um, guilty as charged. I, I just want. I, I do want to just touch on. Um, how did you choose a team when you came out here? Got it. Um, <clears throat> I interviewed a lot of different people and how did I choose a team? So yeah, I interviewed a lot of different people and I wanted to know metrics of what they're looking for Mm -hmm. because a team can't lie about the number of leads they have coming in. Mm -hmm. That's a set number. The amount of closings they have, the amount of closings on average they have per agent. Um, And the team I chose was very dialed in in terms of data, tracking conversations, tracking how many, how many appointments people go on, how many properties under contract it takes to have a certain number of closings, all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I knew with that, if somebody can answer those questions on a team, that's the team I want to go to. Mm -hmm. Because now I've got my lead indicators that I need to hit of number of conversations a number of appointments 
to be able to help a certain number of families, mm -hmm. to be able to make a certain amount of income. And so, and I talked to a lot of, a lot of team leads who said, oh yeah, just come and do my open houses. We've got a really high price point and I sell 60 homes a year. Like, good for you, but <laughs> how does that help me in my career, my business, my family? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there was a different, there was a pretty clear difference with, um, with the team I ended up on with, yeah, the amount of data they track, the blueprint they have, and, um, and just the systems and tools overall. I got lucky that they use the same contact management system um, and a lot of the other tools that I used actually back in California. So fortunately, oh, nice. I didn't have to relearn a lot of the back-end tech. That's great. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's great. A um, couple other things I want to touch on. I know we've been talking a little bit about personal development and um, you know things that we can do to be the best version of ourselves. Like, is there a... a book or a, that you'd recommend or is there a podcast that you go to like what cool. what sort of material could you recommend to our our listeners that might be looking to um better themselves uh, i'll just list a bunch of names do it that, yeah. that i follow unfollow refollow later because it means different things to me at different points in my life um you've got gary v you've got tony robbins um david goggins is up mm -hmm. there uh jocko Willink. Will, Willink. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Mel Robbins. Mm. She's amazing. I love her. Yeah. She's great. She's great. Um, there's just a lot of different things. And I have purposely on my social media had to unfollow a lot of people who are posting negative things or things I don't agree with. That'll plant the wrong seeds in my mind. Mm -hmm. Some of them are close to me. Some aren't. But I've just purposely had to do that. And you have quite a large social media following. Like yeah. it's a legit. Yeah, like eleven or twelve thousand followers on Instagram, don't you? Or is it more? It might be more than that. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's over ten thousand. I I worked really hard to build it for a number of years, and then got over it. Yeah. 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 Just went. I I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have like twelve. Twelve hundred or no, twelve people. Twelve people. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Or was there a decimal in there? <laughs> yeah, one point two, babe. The I think end. Is what That's you actually said. the end. That's what I was done. Well, I, you know, I think it's um, it's a great way to stay in touch with your, you know, your past clients in your sphere, um, and I, but like you said, yeah, I do think it can get a little uh, convoluted depending on who you're following and how much you. I, I, that's why I like YouTube just because you can go search it out and mm -hmm. listen to what you want to listen to. And it's not just thrown at you most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are all good though. Yeah. Those are all good people to follow. So I have one last question. It's yeah. a surprise question though. Ooh, here we go. Real <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Thanks babe. Um, okay. If you were going to write a book mm -hmm. for people, what would it be about? Oh my gosh, this sounds so simple. Follow your dreams. Hmm. Push exactly towards that as hard as you can. <clears throat> and surround yourself with people who are going to be brutally honest. Yeah. Even if it puts you in tears, mm -hmm. like it has for me a lot of times. Who are going to tell you the truth and help you get to where you want to go. Because that's that. somebody who really loves you and cares about you. Mm -hmm. They tell you the truth when it's uncomfortable. And then they'll say, here's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm going to help you by keeping you accountable to get there. Okay. Knowing that that goal of your dream, at least for me personally, it changes every six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I keep pushing hard towards whatever that is, I'll be able to have the skill set, the confidence in the life I want, even if I pivot. I'll be 10 steps ahead if I move to something else. I love that. And you had that with your team before in California, right? Like you had a mentor that was bl brutally honest with you, very open. Y'all were very transparent and that really impacted you in a positive way, huh? Oh yeah, absolutely. And what was great about it as well is he would be very transparent about where he's at in his struggles. And because that's at the end of the day, really it's, it's the people around us mm. on the way to get to those goals. 
in that connection, that love, that friendship, that kinship we have with each other. And that group that comes and goes and changes along the way. But those experiences we have are just, that's something that's really special. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's really important to keep those kinds of people close. I would argue that's one of the most important things that you can do is surround yourself with. I mean, who you surround yourself with is, I've said this from, and I don't want him to get a big head, but like. I think the most important thing, I feel like you're I'm so, I'm so annoyed with I, I have a big head. <laughs> you do. That is, way, that is also Which is true. why I don't have hair. That's <laughs> but, blaming it on that. But like, I legitimately feel like the most important decision that I have made is like you being my husband. Yes. Because I, I think. I totally agree. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but like the, the person that is is motivating me and lifting me up and co- you know coaching me or telling me the hard stuff when they need to like that yeah. has ch- it impacted my life find. in a way right it it is and so i think you know we don't talk about it enough but the people yeah. surrounding us it's vital to our success yeah yeah that's that's the same thing with my gen she'll lean into me and be like nick no mm-hmm. Here, here's what it is yeah. here's yeah. here's what's going on with you right now Mm-hmm. And I'll get bitchy mm-hmm. and defensive, mm-hmm. and then I'll come back mm-hmm. later and b- say, Jen, mm-hmm. dang it, how do I say this? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. Now, now, yeah, very anyways, enough about me. And you want some tacos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's imp- it's really important yeah. to have that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes, and I think that's I know you emphasized the really important aspect of it. it it's a, it's an understatement though. I think like that, especially just your your partner that you choose in life, mm-hmm. right? It's so important because that you have the same goals and that you're pushing after the same thing. Because if you're pushing after it and the partner that you're with, and we both experienced this with past relationships, great, you know, great people, but um, didn't have the same like life goals. And so it, it made it really hard. So from a team standpoint, it's the same way. And that's really cool that you had a leader and sounds like you're in a good situation now where the leadership is similar, but yeah. where the, where you had a leader that was holding you accountable, but also like with love, you yeah. know, just being direct of like, hey, here's what you're doing wrong, but do this because I want you to be successful. That's yeah. awesome. That would be a good book. You could, there'd be plenty to go off of on, on a book like that. It can be your next goal. <laughs> book? Um, <laughs> He's like, no, thank you. <laughs> you can be my ghostwriter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for being with us, Nick. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I did want you to share your, like, where can people find you online? Um, Just put in my name, Nick Aarons. Uh, Easiest way is Instagram, just Nick Aarons Real Estate. Just type in Nick, A-H-R, and I'll pop up there. Um, Yeah, I'm all over. Awesome. awesome. And thank you guys so much for having me. This has been awesome. Yeah. You, I'm glad. I, I love the energy you guys bring. And um, yeah, ju- just there's a really cool undertone from you two of wanting to help people genuinely yeah. without asking for anything back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, appreciate that. We, yeah, we do we, appreciate it. And it, yeah. you know, for us, it's just continuing to try to add value to people's lives. And yeah. so, and we learn. Just learn. And learn. Yeah. You know, and, you know, rip, and, on, rip on him a little bit publicly. Well, also. No, you gave me the compliment that I'm going to, I'm going to think I'm going to just cut that part out and yeah. post that as the oh, short shoot, this time. Lord. The you best decision would. I ever made in you. my life was to be with Andrew. Cool. Uh, that's great. Yeah. That's the only content that we need. And, uh, and best decision you ever made was oh. having her be with you. Uh-huh. Exactly. Right? Exactly. This episode 100%. needs to stop immediately. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. With This does need to stop. But hey, thank you all for listening. We really appreciate you. And like us, subscribe, connect with us. And we'll talk to you next time. See ya.